And also, you know, the other main drug, cannabis, which is about 60-70% of the drug sales, um, at the moment people pay a huge crime tax on that. If you think of one little seed of cannabis, if you plant that in the ground, six months later that's 800 quid's worth of cannabis. That's not because it's an expensive plant, it's because it's a crime tax. Okay? If that sale was put through a legal way, part of that crime tax would come back to the welfare state and pay for the things that we all need as part of a civilized society. Okay, already in California, if you have a medical issue, it's extremely easy to get cannabis through medical dispensaries. But in November, they are going to have a referendum on legalizing the production and sale of all cannabis. Okay, now this has good points and bad points because in the small print, you'll find that it will be, the only people who will be licensed to grow cannabis will be big, big companies. You know, small people in M Mendocino County at the moment just grow a bit as their sort of personal cash crop. It looks like they will be licensed out of things. Um, so, you know, the, the, the devil is in the detail to do with regulation of, uh, of cannabis. Um, but I think one of the key things that's happened with, say, in Holland, which is the only place where cannabis sale is legal at the moment, is they've managed to separate supply of cannabis from heroin. In the early 70s, the Dutch government decided they had a big problem with, with drugs, um, and so and they realized the main problem was with heroin, so they decided to regulate and control cannabis with the aim of separating the supply of cannabis from heroin. Because obviously, there's a, you know, if you go to your cannabis dealer and he doesn't have any cannabis and he has heroin, that's how people get hooked on heroin. The results 30 years later in Holland are amazing compared to Britain, which is carried on the same old short-sighted course. Compared to Holland, Britain now has twice the rate of heroin addiction per head of population. Okay, it's about 6.3 per thousand population in Britain has a heroin problem. In Holland, it's about 2.8 per thousand. Okay, so Holland has a lot less heroin addiction, therefore a lot less crime, therefore a lot less policing and repressive laws, and a lot more co community cohesion because there is less crime. Um, it also means that there's a whole new bunch of people who run ca cannabis cafes who are making a legal trade Money goes to the city and to the state in form of taxation um, and the people who run cannabis cafes are under, you know, they lose their license if there's any other drug other than cannabis on there. And there's clear age limits and there's clear information on what is in the cannabis. Um, and, uh, you know, obviously when cannabis legalisation was being talked about here a few years ago, there was a huge backlash suggesting that cannabis will turn you mad, psychosis links, these sort of things. And like all good propaganda, there is a small degree of truth in that. If you uh, have a predisposition um, towards mental illness, if things are not going well at housing, if you didn't have a good time in school, if family life is difficult, these sort of things, and you smoke loads of really strong skunk, it's not going to do you any good and it may well turn you over the edge. But we have to ask, since the rate of uh, um, mental problems in this country hasn't really changed very much over the last 20, 30 years, it's around about one in a hundred people at, at any one time have, have some sort of mental issues and about three or four percent of the population at some stage over their lives have mental issues. We have to ask, if the amount of cannabis that has been smoked has gone up, which it obviously has, why hasn't the rate of mental addiction gone up? Because it stayed fairly stable. The difference, and there's been some excellent research down at the Maudsley, is in the type of cannabis. 
Okay, cannabis that gets you stoned, i.e. with an extremely high THC content, which has been bred just for the THC content, does cause problems. <coughs> Normal cannabis, which hasn't been um, grown specifically and, uh, um, uh, what's the phrase, breeding, selective breeding to make it stronger, has very little um, cannabinols in it. The t T, uh, the CBDs, cannabinols, which cannabis in the sort of 60s and 70s, wild cannabis, has a good mixture of THC and CBDs. And people who have mental health problems actually find that the CBDs, the cannabinols in cannabis, are very useful, right? Lots of people used to self-medicate ca with cannabis because of the CBDs in them. The problem has been in the last few years, because we've been selectively breeding out the CBDs to get the THC level higher, that it is suspected, and there's a very good professor called Zerin Atikin down at the Maudsley, um, and her research is really looking, it seems to support this theory. So if the coffee shop has clear information on the THC content and the CBD content, the cannabinol content, now that would th make things much clearer. I mean, if you think of it in terms of alcohol, the difference between beer, which is sort of 3% um, alcohol, and a spirit, which is sort of 12, well, no, wine, which is sort of 12%, up to spirits, which is sort of 30, 40, 50%, that's a huge difference. And we wouldn't go into a pub and just say, I'll have some alcohol. And it's the same thing with cannabis. You know, you've got bush, which is 2 or 3% THC versus very strong skunks, which can be sort of 13, 14% THC. So clear labeling of the strength and the THC content and the CBD content, you know, would, be, would make sense economically and from a society point of view.